And I'd just like to read um, just a brief statement. And I don't know if that will change anybody's idea of maybe leaving the meeting and coming back another time, but um, I just want to make sure that it's concise what I'm saying to you, so I'm actually going to read it this evening. Mercy Housing California is proposing to convert the Golden Motel property at 6359 Rosemead Boulevard into permanent affordable housing for veterans and chronically homeless persons. The project is located within county jurisdictional limits just outside of the city. Hence, the city does not have control nor can it either approve or deny the project. The city has heard from residents and businesses who have expressed concerns about the project. The city is monitoring and will be evaluating what issues it can address as it goes through the county approval process. For those who have concerns about the project comments, they should be sent to the regional county planning board who will make the final determination on the project. The project is not subject to approvals or denials by the Temple City Council. Mercy Housing will be conducting a community meeting on May 10th at 6.30 p.m. at Hope Christian Fellowship Church, 6116 North San Gabriel Boulevard to discuss their proposal. They also will have a final hearing on the decision on the 31st, and I believe the yeah. dates and the contact information are up on the screen. I urge you to pack those meetings, just like you're here tonight. Um, all of you who send the council comments on change.com, maybe there's one person in the audience that you can, who's willing to copy and print all those comments, as well as your individual comments, take them, send them. Every comment that the council received should be going to these people located on the screen. Together and collectively, you have a much stronger voice in whether or not this project goes through. Because again, this project is not in Temple City. This council will work its hardest to see what we can do moving forward. And um, will we put this possible, can we put this on agenda item later on in the meeting or could we just go ahead and say we can, do, can we do that now? So I am going to ask our city manager to put this on the next agenda. So actually, if you have concerns that you want to express and comment on that we can talk about, then it'll be on the agenda because the council cannot act on any items that are not on the agenda. We op I open up public comment. If you're here to speak about the Mercy Housing Project, Please note that it is a county project. The public comments that are made tonight regarding this project will not be forwarded to the county. If you would like your comments to be on the record for the project, you will need to attend a county meeting and or speak to county staff and hopefully come to the city council meeting in a couple of weeks when it will be on the agenda. And please take a handout. I believe they're in the back. I don't, I don't know if we maybe need some more, but it has all the contact information and the hearing dates on it. So I'm going to open public comment. Uh, Madam Mayor, may yes. I just add something? Um, the county is going through what we call the, um, um, the environmental analysis process known uh, according to the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA in short. Um, so they are obligated to answer or at least address every written uh, comment. I mean, you, you can go to meetings as well, and then they will register what you said. But um, it's sometimes very, very helpful uh, if you have an opinion, send the county a written uh, comment because they are have uh, they have by by law have to um, record what you send them. Okay. 
Thank you. So if, if we could just please remember to refrain from clapping or cheering or booing, it would much be appreciated. So the first person I'm going to call is Anthony Nguyen. Anthony, are you here? Um, at 6250 Loma Avenue. I'll put this one aside just in case. Okay. Someone who didn't put their last name, but Vicki at 6740 Oak. Vicki, can I have your last name? Re Re Thank you. Thank you. Um, I understand that this project is a county project, but in speaking with my neighbors on my block, a lot of people don't understand how to navigate county versus city. Right. Some of us have Arcadia addresses, some of us have Temple City, and some of us have San Gabriel addresses. All of us obviously will be impacted one way or another, and everyone has an opinion. So the purpose of me coming here this evening is to find out, and thank you very much, um, Vincent, you for sharing that information, because I didn't know that they were obligated to answer every question. If someone in the city can be a conduit for providing us information that we can now put on next door or print out and share with our neighbors so that they can understand the process and get involved in the appropriate way rather than just blogging online and not taking the action that's necessary to get their opinions heard. So that's really my request. So if there's any other information regarding things like you shared with us this evening that you can put out to the community and share with us all, I think that would be very helpful. Thank I appreciate you. you coming this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> That's clapping. <laughs> okay. Um, Q Sun on Naomi. Mr. Sun, welcome. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, City Council, as especially Vincent Yu. Uh, I didn't know that either. Uh, I just want to uh, voice my concern. Uh, as, as a father of uh, two kids, I'm also like a uh, 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 scout master of a uh, Boy Scout Troop 169. I have a few scouts was uh, within uh, starting the Emperor School. So my concern with uh, this Mercer uh, project would be post uh, like public safety concern for the emperor uh, school, which is not far from there. And also uh, across the street, there's a Temple City Education Center, uh, which is after school. My son actually go there. That's a concern for me. Um, so I appreciate uh, all the support from uh, the community. I wish this, uh, through the, the formal process that our comments be heard. Mr. Sun, okay. would you, would you mind speaking into the microphone, please? And yeah, I th thank, thank you. you. I'd like to uh, have our concern and the comments to be heard at the formal process uh, through the, the process to, so everybody will know this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just a reminder that every speaker has two minutes this evening to speak. Okay. Michelle Chow on Camellia. Welcome, Ms. Chow. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council Members. Good, Good evening. evening, all citizens of Temple City. Um, I work for the City of LA. I see the skid row every day. I see the tent city. I see the crime stats the drugs, the gangs. I see people lottering everywhere in the city of LA. This is my home. I don't want any of this to happen. I value my home value and my kid. I have an 11 year old and I don't want this to happen to my kid. I understand that we have to go um, um, through the proper channel so I would appreciate the council members to direct us and give us instructions of how to do that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'm hopeful that everyone will 
take one of these with you because that is where you need to start. Those are the people you need to contact. So please, that is your starting point. Take one of these, write an email. What you're saying tonight, please let these people know also. Okay. Um, Lawrence Chow. Is Lawrence here? Lawrence? <laughs> Coming? Okay. Lawrence, like a man's name? <laughs> oh. I got my back door in. Thank you, Council, for the, for the time. Um, I lived here for 18 years. Um, used to live in the ghetto, just like my, my wife Michelle just spoke. Uh, we see the skip row, homeless every day, drugs, violence. Uh, we don't want to sit here. Uh, we get away from the city, we come to the suburb, we enjoy our life here, and we enjoy the safety, the community, and we definitely do not want a lot of transient coming to our uh, neighborhood and coming to our community. Um, if the council can have any leverage with you, within your power to help us out, that's why we put you guys here to represent us. Thank you. And please. Excuse me. But again, that's, that's now the third time. And I've been gracious, but I will close public comment if it continues. Okay, again, we elected you guys to represent all of us here. And the least I can ask you guys to do for us is to help us out rather than just hear the information, take the right. information. And, and I don't go know, I don't know, sir, if you were. So can you explain to if, us? Hold on one second. I don't know if you were in the back or you didn't hear. I hear that clearly. But we put it, I asked to put it on the agenda in two weeks so mm -hmm. that you can come back and the council can discuss this because then it will be on the agenda. So we're not just saying we don't want to discuss it with you, but we have to follow the protocol, which is what we are governed by as city council members. Perfect. So in two weeks, come on back and we can discuss it. For sure, you're gonna see me again. I hope so. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I don't have a last name, but Janet, and I believe Janet is Janet. Janet, what is your name? Say it once again, please. Wong, W O N. Thank you. Uh, welcome, uh, Mayor Cynthia Sterncrest, and everyone, Council, and all the citizens in Temple City. I just want to um, welcome you. Uh, you know, nearly joined it uh, to the Council. I know how much you and the rest of the Council want to do. Uh, for the city of the Temple City. But this time around, it is time that you can step up and join us in these meetings. Show your presence. We're here. We all have families and lives, but we're here. We want to continue to have a life. We want you to understand there's no grunches, there's no any ill feeling or anything, but we just want to have a life. We want to have a safe community where our kids can walk down the street, not be bothered. Sure. We have no discrimination against homeless, but we want you to help us. Your voice and the council meetings, uh, the council's voice can really help speak up for us that we can't, we can't be heard. We will definitely be there. I appreciate that. Thank and you. so we want, we want your help. And that's Thank all we're going to you know, ask for. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Pastor Kelty, welcome, Pastor Kelty. Did you choose this time? Yes. <laughs> Most of you know me already, so I won't go through that part. But um, I'm here requesting that. You do what you can for the proposal. I'm a veteran of the United States Army and saw service in Vietnam in 1968. There I sustained a non-combat related injury 
that left me 25% disabled. Fortunately for me, this injury is internal and has not restricted me from fully participating in the work and daily activities so that I am not homeless. While I can only speak for myself and not, and not for others, I do understand to much agree what the homeless veteran is going through. They may have injuries of physical, mental, and or emotional, and these injuries, visible or non-visible like mine, prevent them from living a full and whole life. It is for this reason that I'm coming before you this evening to enlist your support to the County Boards of Supervisors. I know that if I was homeless living on the streets or in my car and I was offered a place to call my own, I'd be so very happy and thankful. I don't know exactly what my feelings would be if it was the other way around and I had no place to stay. And I apologize to the City Council and the citizens of Temple City, but I do have negative thoughts. But my most negative thoughts would be that after spending two years in the Army, after being out in the highlands of Vietnam, spending more than one sleepless night in a foxhole waiting for an enemy charge, standing at the door of my barracks watching the enemy mortars shells falling in and near our compound, and realizing that getting home, I would have no place to go because no one would allow me to live in their community. Yes, there will be, could be problems, but I deserve that. I risk my life for this city and this community and this nation, and I deserve a safe place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Steve Stafford. And Steve, you have two minutes. Mayor Sternquist, council members, city staff. I'd like to recommend that they have the council meeting in two weeks over at Live Oak Park where there's more thick. It would be more seating and it would be bigger than, it just, this is too small for this. I think over at Live Oak Park to have the meeting there or even maybe a special meeting there. Because Live Oak Park, the, the area that they've had the meetings there is a lot bigger. And maybe even start early based on the amount of people here, the amount of potential speakers. Um, the thing I see with this is a lot of problems and I don't know if it's possible for the city to annex it and put and push the county away from this. I think it is possible. Um, I think that this just noting the people here, even maybe like a memorandum of understanding between the county and Temple City and you know to make sure that the citizens are heard. I'm not happy having an address clear across the other side of town in the city of San Gabriel. They should have another outreach meeting in the city of Temple City. And I will say this, I think having a special meeting or having the council meeting in two weeks over at Live Oak Park would be a better deal than this. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I don't see why we could maybe possibly reach out to, uh, what is the gentleman's name here? Um, from, from Mercy. And see, yes, from Mercy, and see if they would be willing to hold that meeting at Live Oak Park, if we could make it available for them. So we, we can do that and see and try and make it more convenient for everybody. Okay. Um, David Palmer, Pastor Palmer. Welcome. Mayor, uh, City Council, it's good to see you. Um, I first want to recognize this is, of course, a county measure, not a city measure. So I appreciate your being willing to listen for us. Uh, but I felt it's important for me to share with the city Pastor the importance. Pastor Palmer, would you put that mic? Pull it closer to me. Yeah, Super. Sorry. I thought it was important that I share with you the importance of the Mercy right. Housing Project uh, on Rosemead Boulevard. Uh, first, we recognize that the county of LA has realized that the most effective way to help people who are veterans and homeless individuals is through permanent supportive housing. Uh, this is housing with individuals who have case management to help them, each person, work through the steps to address the deeper needs that they face to help prevent them uh, from living full and productive lives. And so this is the strategy that's working. 
Also, our San Gabriel Valley area struggles to keep up with the increasing need for homeless individuals in our area. These are our people because of the lack of affordable housing and because we are sorely deficient of the public resources available to reach and assist those in need. So this project of Mercy Housing and New Directions will be providing 169 units of supportive housing for veterans and formerly homeless individuals. This means that those individuals who are selected to stay in the housing will be connected directly to resources to help them stay housed. They're going to be in house, not on the street. This will include nine case managers who will be on site 24-7 to help each resident with specific plan to address their needs that will include Department of Mental Health, literacy programs, job placement programs, addiction recovery, therapy, and many other sources of help that will be there on site. There will be an extensive background check on each person who's allowed into that program. Persons with felonies in the last 12 years will not be admitted into residence. Mercy Housing and its residents will have a vested interest in making sure that the project and the community are protected from those who would cause trouble. Each resident will have their own lease with a set of expectations as to the behavior for living in that facility. Persons who violate those expectations will be evicted. Rather than have being a blight in the area, veterans housing communities have proven to show that they are a creative positive influence in a life change, not only for the residents, but for the community around it. I want to first note that the Golden Motel has been identified both by the city and by the Sheriff's Department as a continued problem for our community. This project will be a welcome change to that area. Currently, Mercy Housing is already providing 40 units of veteran housing in Almani. They're open to having tours so people can see the kind of work that they do. It's a beautiful place making a beautiful change in people's lives. Also want to encourage people to come out to the May 10th meeting to hear from Ed Holder himself about how this project is going to make a positive difference in people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Kinney, I can't see the last saw. Thank you. Welcome. So um, I'm here to just um, not too much reiterate what everyone says, but I think from the peer sheer number of people who are opposing the project, uh, I think you can sort of tell the feeling and the frustration and anger from all the community. Um, and sort of the veteran, I, I want to salute you for the services that you provide to the U.S. And again, I want to iterate and emphasize somewhat on behalf of the citizens and residents of Temple City that this is in no way any discrimination or oppose anything with veterans. It's for me personally, I just questioned the intent of the housing project. Number one, the confusion I have is certainly why Temple City? Um, if you think about the area where we're at, do we really have the necessary VA hospital, VA clinic, education center, job placement resources for homes, homeless and for the veteran? Um, is Temple City really a place that's conducent for homeless and, and veterans? Um, the other thing that I'm confused about is, and also concerned about, is really for the, the sake of the residents, right? If this project does proceed, look at all these people are here. You, you're going to have all these people who are really going to be angry. They're going to move out. Property values are going to decrease. Business will close. And that's going to take a hit impact on the city taxes. And then what? I really don't want Temple City to turn into another skid row. And if this does move forward, there's going to be precedents where LA County is going to start building these homeless housing in Arcadia, in Temple City, and Alhambra. Then what? Would that be too late? So right now, I really urge everybody, if you guys, everybody do care about this, it's great that you're here, Sir, but go to May 30th. Go to the May 30th meeting. You go need to, to address the council. I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure that I include they, some of they the They can hear you. Okay. So, um, but that's really just my message. So, um, and, and I just want to reiterate sure. again, it is in the area of Temple City, but it is not in Temple City. Understood. And that's my message within Thank that you. But I, I also welcome, it. and if you are, you're invited to go, May right. 30th, please attend. We hope I, to see you there. If I'm here in town, I will be there. Definitely. You can you can bet. Appreciate it. Okay, I'd Thank like you. to hear firsthand too. Thank you. Um, Tom Pugel? Pugel. Welcome, Mr. Pugel. 
I, I've lived in Temple City for a number of years. I haven't attended a city council meeting since uh, the last house cleaning because things have been going a lot better. But uh, I want to say that uh, I live across from, well, behind Value Mart, and I know some of the promises that are made by the city as to what their regulations have been, which are usually not kept. Every morning at 2 a.m. they start their sweepers going with blowers to blow the the dust out of there. But what I want to say is I respect the, the veteran. I'm one too. And But the thing is, when you mention 40 units, that's one thing. And there they're talking about 169. That's a big difference. And another thing is um, it's more congestion, more crowded. I agree with the individuals that say, and Miss Wong, the lady that spoke, that said, we elected you, Temple City. There's a lot of people here that are not in favor of this. And that thing, I personally still work, and I'm 69, and working full time. To go down to a meeting on May 30th or 31st when they want to have that thing at the LA City Hall at 9 a.m., anybody here that has a livable job where they're trying to work is not going to be able to make that 9 a.m. meeting. And that's where the people that represent us at Temple City should go and say, a majority of our people in Temple City don't want that on our borderline. And uh, personally, I reduced a lot of the crime that went on behind Value Mart by rest uh, restricting them on their liquor control license, that they have to have gates in the alley that can't let traffic go between or behind that store from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I'm just saying that I agree with Ms. Wong that spoke, that was the name I remember, and that City Council, I think we should have representation from the people of City Council saying, hey, the majority of our residents don't want this size of a unit there. If they had 40 there, I probably wouldn't even be here tonight because 40, what's that? But 169 is more than four times that 40. And that's, that's a lot of people have got a lot of different issues, like they said, mental issues and stuff. We don't need more mental issues, I th I'm sure the sheriff will agree, on our streets near Value Mart, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sam. Sam on Val Street. <clears throat> I know you, Sam. <laughs> oh, we don't <laughs> I can't read it. Thank now. you. Good evening, council members, mayor, and residents of Temple City. I'm at the veteran. Next year, will be the 50th anniversary of my entry into the United States. I came from the Philippines and the United States offered me a very good life. I remember the veterans in the Philippines. My father was a prisoner of war. He fought in the war and uh, I remember stories of fallen soldiers, Americans coming down in their parachutes being shot out by Japanese. Uh, the atrocities committed against them. They paid a great price for liberty, for freedom. And when I came here in 68, I came here to an open country. I was welcomed. I got a job. I made a good life. And I find it very much against the grain for me not to welcome veterans who have paid the price to not live in my neighborhood. Yes, they are homeless. But yet, they did pay a price for me to be able to enjoy this good country. And I f find it very selfish of me not to think that I could give up something for them. Then another thing is that homeless exists in almost every city in the country. Where will they go? We push them out of our city, they will just go to another city. And that other city pushes them out, they'll come back to our city. There's only one solution, that is to take care of them in a nice way, proper way, controlled way. And in this Mercy Housing Project, they will be well supervised. As long as they're supervised, controlled, um, monitored, then I think it's better that way than letting them just roam the streets at night and putting up their tents. I will support the Mercy Housing Project. And furthermore, I believe that it's for us to really recognize that homelessness will not disappear from this country, from the cities, 
and it's, I would say this in a very disturbing way, it's up to every community in this country to take ownership of the responsibility of taking care of the homeless. Sam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Lucy Lou? Okay. Fresh air. It's very hot outside. Good evening, council, uh, city staff. Thank you for hearing me out. First of all, thank you to the veterans in, in the audience who serve the city, uh, serve the country. My, I'm here today because I'm not against veterans. I'm not against a housing project. What I am against is where this housing project has been chosen to be. Um, I know it's not within our jurisdiction. I know it's within our sphere of influence, but there's very limited amount of uh, things that we can do. But as uh, previous residents said, uh, we're your constituents. You're the people that we can come uh, and ask for help when a situation like this is dropped into our city uh, or near the border of our city. My main concern, you know, no matter where you put one of these projects, it's going to have a, a, a adverse effects on the surrounding community. You're going to have an increase in crime. <coughs> You're going to have uh, a decrease in the property value. People may move out, whatnot. My main concern is, you know, it, it's, that's not even probably a consideration that they have to take into. But the, the consideration that I'm hoping that we all focus on is the fact that this location is just within too much of a proximity to children. We as adults and parents have an obligation and duty to protect the children. They cannot protect themselves. Okay, so I walked the two schools that I call are in the line, straight line of fire, direct line of fire. You have the Young People's Village on the corner of Garibaldi and Rosemead. Uh, I'm a short person. My stride is about a foot per step. It took me 788 steps to go from the corner of Garibaldi and Rosemead to the office entrance of the Golden Motel. That was under eight minutes, not including wait time at the intersection of Longden and Rosemead. Speaking of Longden, you hang uh, uh, east and there's Longden Elementary within walking distance. So further down, once I hit the uh, front door, then I start, I retabulate my steps to Art Preschool North. That was 270 steps. You see, you have about 10 seconds. Less than uh, three and a half minutes to get there. And on the way, I pass Emperor. Emperor is, uh, you hang up west, there's Emperor Elementary. You hang mm. east, there's Oak Middle School, and there's Temple City High. My concern is, how do we guarantee who gets to live there? What conditions do they have to abide by? Yes, they're going to be supervised, but people are going to be managing this, and people always err. So there's no guarantee. Nobody can guarantee that we're not subjecting our children to, to, any, uh, to being in danger by, unfortunately, a lot of the homeless veterans have mental issues. I'm sorry, our country wronged them, but they have mental issues. How can we take a risk and put them within proximity of our children? That's my main concern. Thank, Thank you, you, Lucy. Thank you. Okay. We have Carol, Carol Daly. Carol. Welcome, Carol. Hi, my name is Carol Daly, and um, I'm here um, representing St. Vincent de Paul that um, works with um, people that are in need. I'm also representing um, Foothills Kitchen. It's a kitchen that we've formed in Monrovia where we reach out and we help veterans and other people, citizens that are without housing. And I'm also working with the Temple City Coalition, um, which has done wonderful things in your city. Um, with all of these different things that I'm doing, they have to do with the question of what would Jesus do? Temple City has got a tremendous opportunity to give housing, good housing to people. I work every day with people that are coming to our kitchen or with people that are calling and saying, I've lost my home, I've lost my job, and, and where can I go? There's a, there's a thing right now where people, there's a, like through the county, people are able to um, go through the um, CES program where they'll do an assessment and then they'll figure out 
where people's needs are, and quite often the answer is we've got a place, well not often, but if, if there is a place, we've got a place in downtown LA in Skid Row. I don't know if you ever get to LA and drive through the streets. They've got tents in front of businesses. They, it's a very sad situation because people don't want to live there. I did my own personal s survey in our kitchen and asked people, um, you know, how Carol, long you have you been? Wrap it up. Yeah, how long have you been homeless, and why did you come back to our city? And these are citizens. These are citizens that are coming home. And like in Temple City, you have a, a wonderful opportunity to afford people with case managers on site taking care of the veterans. If you want to take care of homelessness, give people a home. Thank, Thank you. you. Wendy McGrail, welcome, Wendy. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I was struck by some of the things that um, Pastor um, or um, Father Mark Strader said in his invocation at the beginning of the meeting, and he was talking about building the kingdom of God and goodness and service and peace and unity. And if we are truly a people of faith, I think we, we do need to give our veterans a chance. I think that a lot of our community misunderstand. I understand that um, there's a lot of fear, but I think people are making a lot of assumptions that everybody who moves in there is a criminal, that they are going to be uh, predators and preying on our children, and that's just not the case. These are people that need a home. Our country and our system has failed them. And I know several other people have said, if it's not here, where will it be? We need a place for them. It is really up to us to step up and make that available to them. Again, we have to educate our community, help them understand that this is supportive housing, and that these people that will be moving in will be getting the services that they need. Um, there's already a veterans housing in El Monte. It's beautiful. The crime in that area around that housing has not increased. If you look at the other Mercy housing projects, they've done a great job, in fact, of making their communities better places. And I would just like you to take that into consideration and help us educate the community on homelessness and the needs for housing for everybody. Because if they're not housed, they will be on the streets. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Henry Wong. Welcome, Mr. Wong. Hi, Council. Thank you for setting this up for us today, and thank you for the veterans that serve the country well. So I am not a pastor. I am not a veteran. I am a product of Temple City. I grew up here all my life. I went to elementary school uh, in uh, Emperor. I went to Oak Avenue Middle School and attended Temple City High School. Throughout my entire life here, it has been a terrific experience. Our friends and I were able to live in the city crime-free and experience the joys of growing up in this area without all the ramifications of a bad neighborhood. And that is something I always wanted you know, for the next generation to have. And with this community here, that is something I fear that may not happen again. And I would just want the next generation to have the opportunities I had in this city. But the fear of this community, uh, this uh, project has to be here now, it will disrupt the city. Do you think elementary uh, students are just going to walk by the Mercy Building and not be afraid? They will be afraid. Just the proximity of that location will scare the children of, El of Emperor. They will walk across the block. It will, de it will detriment the area. That area is particularly very popular because, as you know, kids will walk to the market and walk to Little Caesars to get, the, get pizza. And simply by having that area there, it would be a blight on the area. So, you know, Mayor, 
with all the respect, everyone here voted you in the office. And I've never seen so many Asians in the community participate in politics. But with all the respect, we need your commitment that you will be there on May 31st. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just got an invitation, I know, on my phone to go someplace, but um, I will <laughs> make an effort. I will be there, God willing. Um, I'd just like to share again before I close. Is there anyone else before I close public comment? Um, uh, quite a few comments. We have another, you have oh, we raising have, hand. Over here. Yes. You need to fill out a form after you speak, but go ahead. Go ahead, please. Can you just tell us your name? Yes, um, can everybody hear me well? Yes. My name is Anthony Lin. I live in uh, 9510 Lemon Avenue, right across from Temple City High School. First of all, I'd like to have a survey over here. Uh, how many of you have someone close or yourself home get a uh, book? Excuse in? me, sir. You need to address the council. Oh, okay. Thank yes. you. Yes, uh, hi, uh, every councilman and mayor. <laughs> And I, first, I'd like to start with a survey to everyone here. No, 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 no. You can't no, do that. No, okay. You have to talk to us. You need to oh. address the council. Okay. So the, my, my main issue here is um, the Temple City used to be crime-free, as uh, one of the person mentioned earlier. But over the last few uh, couple years, you know Temple City is different now. I mean, we have heard lots of homes get broken in for the last few months. Does everybody agree here? No, you it's can't It's different now because of the proposition. I'd sir, like to hear from sir, councilman here. Can, can I just ask you, it's, it's, it's not an interactive um, sure. meeting, sure. so yeah. if you need to ask a question. Yeah, I just want to know uh, from the city uh, point of view, how do you address the crime issue here? You know, the, although today we have mentioned about the uh, project issue here, but I think everybody's main concern here is the crime. Why, how can we have so many crime uh, here happening in our city? Uh, just a few days ago, two houses next to my ho home get broken in uh, just like that. And almost, almost every block in this city all have homes get broken in. Do we have any solution to this? Okay, I just want to take one step away from having the home project. Can any one of the councilmen here provide us a more country, country uh, plan to address this issue? That's my main question here. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Um, I would just like to share with you that once a month, we have a sheriff's meeting that's a public meeting. It's at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes, it's early, but it, it is open to try and accommodate residents who would like to know more about what is going on with crime and statistics in our city. Is that the third Wednesday? I have so many meetings. I'm last, fourth, last, fourth, last, fourth, last, last Wednesday. Wednesday. Last Wednesday of the month in our community room, 7 o'clock. It is open to the public. You can come. You can listen to the briefing from our sheriff team. You can listen to the statistics provided. You will have a very good understanding, and I encourage anyone here who would like to know the answer to those questions to attend that meeting. And please see um, Peggy. She can give you the exact, um, if you need something written down to remember. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, also, just a reminder, just a reminder that council cannot act on items that are not on the agenda. So, um, with that, also there were a handful of people who said that we are your elected officials and that you come to us to represent you, and um, that is why in two weeks this council is going to put the item on the agenda so that we can discuss it with you and we can um, interact and, and answer and you can hear what our thoughts are. But that we are being responsive or it would not be on the agenda in a couple of weeks. But in all honesty, two or three days ago I started receiving emails. Council, because of a, something called the Brown Act, we, we don't call one another up and say, did you see all those emails? Let's figure out what we're going to do. That doesn't happen on city council. So we need to have open discussion in a public forum so that you know that what we are doing. And that's why we have city council meetings, to do the business of the city open with 
public discussion. So I invite you to come back in two weeks. We'll try and see if we can move the meeting to Live Oak Park. And um, then that will accommodate more people more comfortably. Okay. Um, we're, oh, yes, we have one more. Fiona, Ty. Welcome, Fiona. Hello, Mayor, um, councils, and everybody. Well, um, uh, I, I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be discriminated, and I fully respect veterans. And as a good citizen, we pay our tax. Part of it, it can be used to, you know, support those veteran program. So I'm now thinking about ourselves. So we need a good um, environment, good neighborhood, safe neighborhood for our kids, and. Um, with, as we already heard, all those concerns, and as a resident here, I'm thinking about moving out because of those concerns. And maybe now is the time to, to consider, well, what are the causes of having that project go through? What might, go, what might be the potential causes to the city of town? Temple City. I understand that that project doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of Temple City, but I'm hoping and I'm begging you to, you know, I know there will be a council meeting in two weeks, and I think most of us, we want to cooperate and support and work together to, you know, um, have this project move somewhere else, just not Temple City. And I'm not working in, right. I'm not a real estate. And just I'm not a real keep in mind it is not Temple City. I know, well, the name. There's neighbor, a lot of reference that it is in the, Temple City. It is yeah. not in Temple City. Very close by. It is very, it is very close. close. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, well, as very far close. as I notice, um, our neighbor city um, started with A, because of the recent, uh, lately, their safety concern, a lot of people, they move out of the, na the city. And um, I'm not sure that's true, but based on my observation, I already seen the property value is already decreased. And mm -hmm. I've seen the property value in Temple City it has increased. Fiona, we, you have a couple seconds. Okay, then, well, I don't know what happened after this project go through. So just my concern, and I'm hoping we can work together to do something to, you know, maintain a safe community. Yes, and Fiona, you are Thank attending you. these meetings. Yes, I will. Okay. okay. Um, Nick? Nick? Welcome, Nick. Hi, Council. Uh, I know she just mentioned that you mentioned that this is not Temple City area, but no, no, it is Temple City area. It is not in the city of Temple. Not city. in the city of Temple City, but uh, based on the building standard, that we we go managing the city. We go managing the community by the rules, right? Uh, if in this case, that's over. Uh, 20 or 30 dwelling per acre, the land won't be able to handle it. Regardless, this is homeless or a veteran. We're not, you know, we're not like against veteran. We're not supporting veteran. Uh, I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not that old. But uh, I hope if I get older, I get home to stay. Uh, that's always the case. But there seem to be changing the standard of building code, city code. Why they are not changing? the better regulation or supporting for the veteran in the other way? That's the question. Who's responsible for that? You say you build 170 units on the land just to supporting it? it, it, it not, it's not fitting with a, with a city building standard, with a city planning standard. It's not, it's not 
according to the law. We go by the rules, right? The city, I just will say that the city has no control over land use in the unincorporated area of Well, I know. LA City has the control of that. You do 20 dwelling per acre, study traffic, study sewer, study electric supply, study pollutions. Uh, what you seem to be, you want to break the law to make 170 units on that piece of land. It's, it's not usual. I would say that way. You know, that's, that's my question and concern. Not just for the safety. Uh, for instance, I just one day, I, I don't want to define homeless and veteran, veteran at the same. I was driving by Rosemead and uh, Foothill Boulevard. Couple seconds, sir. Couple seconds. Just one key point. I see every single traffic light has a homeless standing by the traffic light, by the left turning or the right turning, holding a plate. Who's taking care of that before we're building something? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Michelle? Shell? Shell? Good evening, uh, councils and members. Um, if you could speak a little bit louder okay. into the microphone. Thank you. Um, I'm here to address my concern about this project. Um, I live a couple blocks. Um, I'm living on Kalita Street, just a couple of blocks uh, from the, um, the location. And uh, my, all my kids are going to school nearby. Um, I have no discrimination feelings against the veterans and the homeless people because uh, it's not like because I'm no, I think a lot of people think that they are having mental issues and, you know, um, criminal issues or drug issues. But my problem is, uh, my concern is the traffic um, in the area on Rosemead, between London and uh, Rosemead and then um, Emperor and Rosemead. There's a lot of kids crossing by. So if we have this project, it's going to be a lot of units in there, people who need medical help and then they might need other help. Um, I did some research, um, statistics shows that, you know, when <coughs> around this um, project, usually there's a high number of calls on the emergency need and the police need. So it's gonna increase more traffic in this area. And um, a lot of kids, they are walking home or going to school, you know, around this area. So how are we going to address the problem um, you know, and then help the kids in this area. And I, I mean, I have no feeling against um, veterans and people because we are really, have, um, I'm a citizen in here. I'm always a frequent donor for the uh, Veterans America and then my kids are all volunteers for the community. We try to pay back for the community. But the things that for the kids, they are walking and then there's a lot of traffic in there. And then um, also for the sake of the, um, for the people who are living in there, they need a medical, help, but there's not a lot, lot, we don't have a lot of medical facilities around this area, so they might need to have a lot of emergency calls, and uh, it's going to be more hectic in there. So that's why my Thank concern you. is. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony, did Anthony Nguyen ever come back? Oh, that, oh, was, that was you, Anthony, okay. And Mike Lee. Welcome. Councilman, can you take a few seconds of your time? Can you look into this audience here? Can you tell me what you see here, madam? Please? It, Would again, you again, sir, it's, it's not an interactive meeting. It's, with I will the, get to the point. I will get to the okay. point. Okay. We are happy to, for you to listen to you address the council. Yeah, I, I want to know what you interpret because there is two interpretation in this, right? One is these a bunch of lunatics here, and they waste their time coming to see you. No. The other one is, may I tell you? They are worried about their safety. Do you know? Every one of my friends, they have their kids walk to London School, they walk to Amper, they walk to um, Oak Evelyn, right? They walk to high school. I've seen them, they ride their bike. Sir, 
Yes, I will get to the point. No. Yes. I, 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 will get I, I, I will allow you to get to the point if you address the council and okay. not the audience. Can well, I, they are can, involved. Can I respectfully? No, no, no. They, they are, are involved not, in this. They are not involved in your no, conversation. No. They, they will shouldn't be. Well, that's, okay. not, that's not our process. Okay. Well, anyway, regardless, I want you to tell each one of them no. that their children are in great hand because you approved this project that they will be walking to school safely, rather secure. Sir, you thank, you, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I don't okay. think Is there anyone the else who would like to speak publicly? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Staff. Um, my name is Brenda Chan. I'm on Sultana Avenue, which is just a couple blocks from um, the project, the um, proposed project. And I want to say I'm a nurse and I'm a, I'm a teacher, and I have care for veterans in the VA, and also I've worked at the Downtown Union Rescue Mission. So I have a lot of feelings for them, and I know they deserve a lot. But the reason I'm here, because I'm a teacher, and we all know that, that you know, in a class, when you have 30 students, there are some students very well behaved. Some students may not. So my concern is a lot of um, the homeless population, it's true that they have a lot of um, mental health issues. So if we have a housing project for 169 units, can we guarantee all 169 units are very good citizens. I'm not saying that they are not, but I'm just saying that's my concern. Some, some residents mentioned here that they're feeling about the crime rate. That cannot be true because we're not saying homeless people are bad people. So I'm against what some of them have said. But I just want to kind of, you know, I don't know why I'm getting nervous, but um, I'm just saying we want to be compassionate and caring for them. But how can we do it safely for our kids? I have kids walking from high school to my house, from emperor to my house. So, and I'm so glad we do have those yellow lines for the crossing. That's just for the past two years. Because when my daughter went to Oak, there was no yellow lines. Do you know how dangerous was on the emperor and the Oak, that intersection? And I'm so glad even I think Vince was there in the morning to make sure the traffic is good. So as a parent, as a teacher, as a nurse, safety is my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes. And like your classroom, we have some very well behaved <laughs> students in the class today and some not very well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Mayor and um, Councilman and um, the residents in the communities of Temple City. Um, I am a resident of Temple City for 30 years and I have um, some concerns when yeah, I Could you speak into the microphone? Yeah, Thank I you. have uh, great concerns about the housing project um, for the reason I'm about to share with you. Um, I actually did some research on um, the homeless population. So this is data actually from the um, you know, National Coalitions for Homeless. Um, it says 22% of them have severe and persistent mental health illness, and 66% have alcohol and drug abuse, substance, substance abuse problems. So that's a very high percentage. And I understand that we want to help um, the homeless population, but I also question why Temple City is selected, because uh, the environment overall, we are a small community, we don't have, um, rehab centers, we don't have facilities to help, um, you know, the homeless population with these problems. Um, another data that I also wanted to share with you is that um, the studies on inmates, um, um, people who committed crimes, um, you know, they're like strong associations with inmates and the, the homelessness. So the rate of violent crimes is 40 times higher when the inmate is a homeless person. Um, the rate of nonviolent crimes is um, 27 times higher when the inmate is homeless. So 
that is why um, you know all of the concerns that's been raised by the community today is not in vain. It's not we we did not make up those numbers. These are actually done by research studies and proven. So I, I can share the data with you, and it's from the National Coalition of Homeless. Um, you know, um, people have already mentioned the the problems that um, you know is so close to A few the four, four public schools and the two preschools in the area, and it's going to decrease the market value for our properties. Um, we have a lot of questions. I understand that this is not um, under the jurisdiction for the council, but we also want to take the opportunities to pre um, present um, our question to LA County. When they select Temple City, um, they're collecting tax money from our community so that they can build affordable housing to help the veterans or the homeless. But I really question how they um, select Temple City because the average home values for and LA County. Be sure and come to those meetings and and ask those questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so average value and for, I, I, for, I hate for to cut LA you off, County but is five hundred forty-eight thousand. Thank you. Temple and City, thank the you. average home value is seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay. So I think the I, council is well aware of the of yeah. the home so values. It, it makes more sense for them to find a place okay. that you can know, I just a tell you that and we thank you for your comments, but your time is exceeded. So I'd like so, to just know, keep I, I the just, meeting on target on. and we close can. public comment. If there's no one else who would like to speak, yeah. okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tim, and um, I recently moved to Temple City. It is my third year. Um, I want to share some personal experience on my interaction with veterans and homeless people. I, so I work at, um, um, at uh, Pasadena in the Old Town, and that area has a lot of homeless. Um, I, when I walk um, lunchtime to get a boba milk tea or so, I'm always being harassed by them. Even um, so, I, I want I want to share, emphasize that the danger of having a community with homeless people. You're going to get harassment. You're going to see um, homeless people running in the middle of the street, blocking traffic, because that happened before. And you're going to get people trying to take your boba milk tea. <laughs> yeah. So I want everybody to. I'm not trying to scare you guys, but that is the reality. And I just want to share my experience and how. How my where my fear came, really Thank came you. from. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, I'm going to. I'm sorry. He spoke already. He, he already spoke. He spoke already. I am going to close public comment now. Okay. Yes. Thank you for everyone who took the time to come out this evening, and I hope to see you all back in a in a couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you.